Good morning and welcome to another exciting Sunday in the presence of the Lord. This is the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Cornerstone Chapel, Calgary, and this is the Children's Ministry. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we thank you for today. Thank you for another Sunday. Thank you for bringing us into your presence. Father, as we have come, we pray that you teach us from your word. Open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, and open our minds, O oh Lord, even to benefit from your word today. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. So children, this is our last lesson on the book of Nehemiah. We have learned that Nehemiah was definitely working with God to complete what seemed impossible. What are those things that Nehemiah was able to accomplish with God's help and favor? He had success with the king to go on to his journey. If he were to have the materials provided to him, safe travels, people to help him, protection as they rebuilt the walls and the gates. And he was able to help the poor people. It sounds like everything is back to normal. However, that is not the case. We're going to read about another man who was devoted to God, Ezra. We're going to skim through chapters 8 and 9 to see how God used Ezra to lead the children of Israel to repent. Before we proceed, let's take a look at our memory verse, which we're going to be reading together or saying together today. Our memory verse, which is the same one we have been learning, is from the book of Nehemiah, 
chapter 1 verse 11. I'm very sure you know that memory verse by heart now. So let's take it one, two, go. O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servants and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. Nehemiah 1, 11. So we're going to look at uh, some Bible texts and um, there are different Bible texts. So I need you to just go pick up your Bible if you don't have it with you. And we're going to go through those Bible passages together. So we're going to open first of all to the book of Nehemiah chapter 8 verses 1 to 6. Afterwards, we will look at Nehemiah chapter 8 verses 9 to 12 and then we will look at Nehemiah chapter 9 verses 1 to 5 as well as verses 28 to 31. So I'm going to start reading from Nehemiah chapter 8 verses 1. All the people came together as one in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra the teacher of the Lord to bring out the book of the law of Moses which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak to noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the teacher of the law, stood on a high wooden platform built for the occasion. Beside him, on his right side, on his right stood Matithia, Shema, Anania, Uriah, Hilkia, and Maasia. And on his left were Pedeia, Michelle, Markija, Hashem, Hashbadanam, Zechariah, and Meshulam. Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them. And he opened it and the people all stood up. Verse 6. Ezra praised the Lord the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So we're taking verses 9 to 12. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and teacher of the law, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Verse 11. The Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be still, for this day is a holy day. Do not grieve. Then all the people went away to eat and drink, to send portions of food and to celebrate with great joy, because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. Verses 28 to 30, 31 of chapter 9. But as soon as they were at rest, they again did what was evil in your sight. Then you abandoned them to the hand of their enemies, so that they ruled over them. And when they cried out to you again, you heard from heaven, and in your compassion you delivered them time after time. You want them in order to turn 
them back to your law, but they became arrogant and disobeyed your commands. They sinned against your ordinances, of which you said the person who obeys them will live by them. Stubbornly, they turned their backs on you, became stiff-necked and refused to listen. For many years, you were very patient with them. By your spirit, you run them through your prophets. Yet, they paid no attention. So you gave them into the hands of the neighboring peoples. But in your great mercy, you did not put an end to them or abandon them. For you are a gracious and merciful God. So let's go to our discussion question. So the first question today says, where did the people assemble? So children, I know you're good boys and girls, and you're ready to answer these questions with me. So where did the people assemble? Did you write something down? Yes, before the water gate. That's what we read in the Bible, that the people assembled before the water gate. Question number two. Who did the Israelites ask to read the book of the law of Moses? Can you guess? Do you remember? We read that in the Bible passage. Ezra the scribe, he was also a priest. You know what a scribe is? A scribe is a religious leader and known as a consultant or a scholar. So who were the people that listened to Ezra read the law? All who were able to understand. So every man, every woman that were able to understand were there to listen. Question four. What is Nehemiah's position? What was his position? He was the governor. Nehemiah was the governor. Question five. Why do you think that they were sacred to the Lord and he didn't want the people to mourn or rape? Children, there are a couple of reasons we read that in the Bible where it tells us that the day was sacred to the Lord and the people should not mourn or weep. And this was because the children of God were coming back to him and they were coming to listen to his word and to, you know, and to enjoy the word of God, listen to it and then repent from their evil ways and do what was good in the sight of the Lord. Question 6. What do you think caused the Israelites to fast and confess their sins? They had God's word and felt convicted. They became aware that they were sinning. You know how you just suddenly realize that, oh my God, I've been naughty, this thing I've been doing, and my mom has been telling me, stop doing it, don't do this, don't do that. Oh Lord, forgive me, I didn't know I've been sin sinning. So you just re suddenly realize that, oh, this is not right. So that was exactly what happened to them. Question seven, why do you think the Israelites kept disobeying God's command? They were not self-reflecting, they are not reading God's law. They are rebellious. They are under the influence of non-believers. And this same thing happens to us as the children of God. When we do not read the Bible, when we find ourselves in, in situations that we don't know what to do, we don't know what the Bible says about it, and we don't know what action to take or not to take. And sometimes we just decide, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be nice, I'm not going to be obedient. And then sometimes you have people that influence us. You know, when you have those friends that don't know what is good or what is right or they just decide that they want to be naughty and then they tell you oh do what is bad do what is naughty you should know as good boys and girls as children of god that you should not be under the influence of people who do not know the right things to do according to the bible according to the will of god question number eight why do you think God continually shows the Israelites compassion and mercy when they keep turning their backs on him? Can you tell me some of the answers that you might have written down or that you're thinking of? Yes, because God lost them, because he's called them by his name, because he just lost them and he wants them to, to be his own. So each time 
the naughty, they disobey, they then repent and then come back to God. And it's the same thing we do because I mean, check yourself with your parents. Each time you're naughty, it doesn't stop your parents from loving you. They see you doing the bad things they correct you you do it again and you come back and say mom i'm sorry dad i'm sorry and then they still love you it's exactly the same thing with god our last question for the day do you think god will show compassion and mercy on you when you keep keep on sinning why or why not god definitely does not want us to keep on sinning you know the bible says that can we continue in sin and expect that grace will abound god doesn't want us to keep on doing the same bad things over and over and over again boys and girls that does not make god happy but it doesn't stop god from forgiving us when we come back to him to say that we are sorry but once you say you're sorry don't do the wrong things again okay boys and girls God's Story, Nehemiah. So part of God's story is about a guy named Nehemiah, and it goes like this. Remember God's family? They were called the Israelites because they lived in, you guessed it, Israel. But some of them lived far away from their home, and one of those guys was Nehemiah. He lived in Persia and worked for the king. One day, his brother told him that a city in Israel called Jerusalem was suffering and many people there weren't following God anymore, and their city wasn't in very good shape. Nehemiah cried, God, you are wonderful, but your family's home is in trouble. Please help us. When I serve the king his wine today, make him pleased with me and have him do what I ask. Later, when Nehemiah served the king's wine, the king noticed that Nehemiah looked sad. So the king asked why. Nehemiah told him about Jerusalem, and asked if he could go back to rebuild the wall. The king could have killed Nehemiah for asking to leave, but instead, he said go. He even helped. That's because God heard Nehemiah's prayer and answered it. Anyway, Nehemiah went to work rebuilding the wall, but little did he know he was going to need to ask for a lot more help from God. See, God and his family have always had enemies. And these enemies wanted to stop Nehemiah and the people helping him. First, they made fun of them. So Nehemiah prayed again. He said, God, some people hate us. Please get rid of them, and went back to work. Now, God does hear and answer every prayer, but sometimes not in the way we expect or even in the way we want. And at first, it seemed like God wasn't answering this one at all, because when the enemy saw that Nehemiah was still building, they planned an attack. But Nehemiah trusted that God heard his prayer even if it didn't feel like it. And God did! He caused some people to overhear the enemy's plan and warn Nehemiah. Even though the enemies were still after him, Nehemiah planned a defense and told the others, don't be afraid of your enemies. Remember the Lord, he is great and powerful. And on they worked, building, building building. The closer the wall got to being finished, the more Nehemiah's enemies realized they couldn't stop him by making fun of him or by attacking him. Hmm. Time for something else. They tried everything. They sent messages to get Nehemiah to leave the wall and meet them. He wouldn't. They hoped Nehemiah's hands would get weak, but Nehemiah had asked God to make his hands stronger. They even paid a priest to ask Nehemiah to leave the wall and come to the temple. But Nehemiah trusted God more than anyone else, even the priest, and he refused to stop doing the job God had given him. Kids, are you willing to listen to God and obey him no matter what? Well, finally, the wall was done. God's family got to go home again and Nehemiah's enemies found that nothing stops God's plans. The Israelites celebrated and praised God, and as they praised, they realized how much their sins had hurt God, and they felt terrible. They told God they were sorry and thanked Him for helping them. Then they made a brand new promise to follow Him, and Jerusalem was once again a safe place where people honored God. And that's the story of Nehemiah. But just so you know, there's another story where God fixes something that's broken. 
See, one day, God would send a very special rescuer, not to save a wall, but to save the world. He made it possible for not just Israelites, but everyone in the whole world to confess their sin to God, thank Him for His rescue, and follow Him. And just like that old wall was made new back then, our old lives can be made new right now, because Jesus has rescued us. And that's a part of God's story. So, as we wrap up on the book of Nehemiah, I want to encourage you to read the rest of the book of Nehemiah. In chapters 10 to 13, Nehemiah continues to build a relationship with the people in Jerusalem by coming into agreement and establishing policies to help the people relearn the importance of God's law. Nehemiah returned to Babylon after 12 years, keeping his agreement to, to the king that he would someday return. When he returned to visit the Israelites, do you think they were living godly lives or do you think they started slipping away from God's laws again? Sadly, they were slipping away again. Nehemiah had to remind them of the importance of the Sabbath and that the influences of unbelievers were changing their hearts away from God. After you leave church on Sunday, do you sometimes forget God's ways? After you read your Bible, do you sometimes forget what you have written? What can you do throughout the week to help you stay focused on God and His ways? Keep reading the Bible. Keep listening to the Word of God. Listen to your church services. Have your memory verses. Read them each and every day. That will help you to keep yourself focused. You stay focused on God and you will be able to keep His ways. Shall we pray as we come to the end of today's lesson? Our Father and our God, we thank you. We give you praise. We are grateful to you for how you have helped us to learn from you. Father Lord, we commit ourselves into thy hands. As we go into this week, Father, I pray for these boys and girls, these wonderful boys and girls. I pray that you keep them safe. I pray that you will be with them, you guide them, you keep them and their family safe in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that everything that they have learned, Father, from you, from all of the lessons that we have taken, we pray, O oh Lord, that you help them to remember and you help each and every one of us to be doers of your word and not just hearers in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, go ahead of us, be our guide. Be our friend, be our God, O oh Lord, and let your name alone be glorified in our lives. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So children, come next week. We will begin another exciting series of lessons. See you then. Keep safe. How can we keep safe? Three words that we need to remember. Hands. Face, space, hands, sanitize, washing your hands often for at least 20 seconds, or using hand sanitizer keeps your hands clean and free from germs. Face, wear a mask. Wearing a mask in public or crowded spaces helps keep you and others around you safe from germs. Cover your cough or sneeze. Use your elbow or tissue. Be sure to wash your hands immediately after. Space. Social distance. Social distancing means we keep about six feet or two arms length apart from other people. This means we have to keep our hands to ourselves and stay at home more. When we follow the rules, we can be rest assured that this too shall pass. Then we can resume doing the things we love. With the ones we love, like we used to. Stay, stay safe. safe.